I'm Nicholas from Pop Culture Roulette, and sometimes Media Pod Smash. Welcome to Horror Through the Decades. As we discussed, I was born in 1978, so I've picked a film from each decade that I've been alive. This week, we're going to go with Killer Clowns from Outer Space, the classic that was released on May of 1988. Um, it was directed by Stephen Kyoto. Written by Charles Stephen and Edward Kyoto, uh, starring uh, Grant Kramer, Suzanne Snyder, and John Allen Nelson, who were basically their career that guys. Like you, you look them up on IMDb. They had a little bit of a, a career before, and they've had quite the career since, but uh, not, like nothing to make them like superstars. I would say easily the biggest star of this movie is John Vernon, uh, who you might know as Dean Wormer from Animal House. That's one of his bigger roles. But when you see him, you're like, oh yeah, because he is a definite that guy. Uh, he's got a very distinctive that guy voice. And, you know, I mean, come on, Animal House. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Uh, we also get a quick little cameo from one Christopher Titus in his first ever movie role. Not that he's had a big movie career, but, you know, I don't know where he was in his stand-up career in 1988, but I know uh, it was at least big enough to get him a quick couple scenes in, in a super cheesy, uh, you know, 80s movie. Um, this, song, this movie opens with a classic uh, 80s punk tune from a band called the Dickies and of course I'm using classic wrong because no one's ever heard it before but it is an 80s movie with a mo the the song is called is, is called Killer Clowns it basically tells you what you're about to watch there is no they don't try to hide what they're doing here there's no like ooh look over here we're really doing this over here this is not a psychological thriller this is just a straight 80s horror movie? <laughs> uh, we open uh, on Big Top Burger, which is a clown-themed restaurant. Because, you know, we don't want to miss any, any chances of foreshadowing here. Um, now, supposedly these are all teens. Oh, and then we quickly go from that to make out point. Supposedly these are all teens. They all look like they're in their late 20s, early 30s. Like, it is... They're all... You're like, why are you guys at Makeout Point? You all own houses. <laughs> Pretty sure you're all going to be late for work in the morning. <laughs> um, then we cut back to town, where we get our Christopher Titus cameo. Uh, drinking a beer, which is literally a can labeled beer. <laughs> it just says beer and he's he's walking with a bag where we also get to see john vernon for the first time in his oh, these typical kids he's the cop of the town and we'll get one more on him later we'll we'll get to him uh we also now have the introduction of the terenzi brothers who come in and out of the movie whenever the movie needs to move the plot along or have something crazy happen uh they are going to sell ice cream at Makeout Point because, you know, clearly that's what people at Makeout Point are there for. Also, in a clown truck. Because once again, we don't want to miss an opportunity to foreshadow what's happening. Um, there's a cameo by a gentleman named Royal Dano, who uh, for some people it probably is a huge deal. Uh, he's He's a that guy from 1947 to 1993. He, like, a, you looked up his IMDb and he is super extensive. He's one of those guys that, like, he's very, uh, like, he's got kind of a, a little bit of a rubber face. But, like, he, he has a very distinctive voice and a, dang, go me, you know. Like, you're like, okay, you know. So we're here at Makeout Point. It, they just keep jumping around at the beginning. Now we're back at Makeout Point, and our hero, uh, I'm just going to call him Hero because I don't remember his name in the movie, Grant Kramer, and his girlfriend, Suzanne Snyder, not Suzanne Summer. 
are, are making out and they see a comet or a shooting star and she wants to go chase it. And he's all like, but we're here at make out point. And she's all like, but let's go chase it. And instead of just going, nah, we're at make out point, he goes, all right, let's go chase it. Royal Dano also sees the shooting star, grabs his dog in a shovel, and heads towards it because he is going to be rich. Um, now, we're, both of these people have followed, and they get to the middle of the woods. We're at a forest, and a giant circus tent, like 30 feet tall, if not even taller, has appeared in the middle of the forest, and we don't question it. We go, well, we got to go investigate. There's no roads leading into it. There's no pathway. Like, it's just all of a sudden here in the middle of the woods. Um, this is the part of the movie that made me mad. And followers of the podcast, uh, the clown steals the dog. Now this clown, now all the clowns have to die. Because you don't mess with the dog. Farmer, whatever. Clown, dog, you leave him alone. Um... I, I really hope that we, we have the clip uh, here, but there's a great scene with, with uh, well, I'm going to steal very liberally from a podcast uh, called HBO, um, Exquisite Acting. Uh, Royal Dano gives whatever, whatever, whatever salary for the cameo that they had to, to give him, man, does he give you a great scene here. Oh, it's it's a uh, it's amazing. Now we're at uh, barely ten minutes into the movie, and we see our first clown, who immediately shoots Royal Dano and turns him into cotton candy. Um, so now we're back at the police station, where John Vernon is giving us the classic '80s well, I mean, like cliche too. cop, I mean, like he's just, just a jerk campus. for no reason than just he's a jerk. Like like, it is about as 80s cliche as you can get. Um, our other hero, John Allen Nelson, we'll call him Goody Goody from here on. Because he's the good cop. He went to training and he did all his stuff. Um, you know, so we're introduced to those characters. Now we go back to our hero and the girl. They find the circus tent and immediately decide to uh, go into it. Because, you know big metal circus tents in the middle of the forest that just show up that's what you want to do go into them not go uh let's get out of here <laughs> uh they go in they see some stuff they realize that we're dealing with some sort of alien something bad we now see some more clowns that have a popcorn gun now what's funny is this this movie was a uh, is low budget it's not hard to see that it's low budget um most of the movie is done practically. There are some special effects uh, that are done CGI or digitally, but you can tell that most of this movie is done with rubber masks and, and people acting. Um, but apparently a good chunk of the budget went to make this one popcorn gun. Um, we don't really know why they shoot popcorn. Uh, we don't find... Well, we'll find out later. But there is a, a gun that shoots popcorn. Apparently, the popcorn also goes around corners and long, long distance hallways. Uh, so the kids, our hero, uh, they jump in their car. They run away and they jump in their car and they take off running for the police station. Now we're uh, 20 some odd minutes into the movie and the clowns are heading into town. Um, now, unlike most 80s movies... Or most movies involving teenagers and the cops, the cops don't immediately like dismiss the kids. I mean, well, John Vernon does, cause yeah, he's a jerk, and all the kids are out to make him look like a fool, and they're uh, you know, he he actually says at uh, at 24 minutes in, 
we'll we'll maybe cut but this in, but he says, you're not going to make a dummy out of me. Make a dummy out of yourself. But you're not going to make a dummy out of me. Remember that, kids. We'll circle back to that. So the good cop is like, oh my goodness, there are aliens, there are, there are clowns, let's go investigate. We now discover that the goody-goody cop is also the hero's girlfriend's ex. Oh, tension. Tension builds. Now, uh, there's a montage uh, throughout the town um, of the clowns just showing up at people's doors or setting up fake puppet shows or going into the drugstore. Just randomly kidnapping people. Uh, they're kidnapping them by turning them all into cotton candy. Uh, there's a really good one um, where the cops show up at this girl uh, wearing somewhat see-through lingerie for no apparent reason to answer the door and uh, she answers the door and there's a couple clowns there that go pizza and she's like ooh pizza and then another clown pops out of the pizza box and shoots her and turns her into cotton candy um, oh so by the time that the good cop and the hero have now gotten to where the tent should be uh, the tent has moved. The clowns have moved the tent from the woods. Yeah, that's what I'd like to know. We don't know where they moved it to, but they moved it. Now the hero and Goody Goody are fighting with each other. Now it's because of the tension of the, the clowns. But it's really about, you know, what's her name? <laughs> the girl. Um, there is a scene that I think will cause a, a bit of a divisive issue here. A tiny clown has a little bike and he pulls up on a biker gang that's randomly outside this dive bar in, in town. And the biggest, baddest biker walks over and he's like, let me ride your bike. And the little clown says, no. And uh, then the little the biker goes, let me honk the horn. And the clown's like, okay. And the biker picks up the bike and he smashes it. Because, you know, bikers are jerks. So the clown then challenges him to a fight. What are you going to do? And he punches Stop the big bad off. biker's head clean off. Which sounds familiar. However, I looked it up. This movie takes place one full year before Jason takes Manhattan. So I wonder, Mr. Friday the 13th Jason uh, producers, were you stealing... From killer clowns from outer space? Because I think you were. <laughs> um, now, uh, those of you who have watched or listened to the podcast know that we have a thing with pedophiles and AGT. Uh, the clowns apparently watch AGT because they start going after little girls. Uh, they get a little creepy. Um, we, we've, we come across... Listen, they're just, it's montage after montage, there's moment after moment, it's quick cuts, quick cuts, lots of bright, past, not, not pastel, but like bright scenery, uh, you know, like it, this movie is in the 80s, it takes place in the 80s, like it is about as 80s as you get, but we'll get on to that. We're now, we're back in town, the cop and the guy are, are on the same side because they've now come across some clowns that are doing things the hero girl decides to take a shower for some unknown reason we don't know they don't show anything this movie is only pg pg 13 like there's not a lot of blood and violence or gore uh not a lot of language either but for whatever reason she decides to take a shower where we see the popcorn again now the popcorn starts getting crazy but at the same time they show us that, they show us another clown at Big Top Burger filling the dumpster full of popcorn. Um, when an employee comes out to throw the trash away, the dumpster now eats the employee. Now, we realize that the popcorn grows up to be little, uh, little, little clown heads on snakes um, that try to eat you. Um, I don't know if... Or at, if given the time, they grow into full clowns. 
They don't really specify, but it's very strange. But again, I mean, we are watching a movie called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Um, there is a clown that comes up to a bunch of people at a bus stop and starts delighting them with uh, shadow puppets. Like, he's making, like, a... George Washington crossing the Delaware. He's making all kinds of crazy stuff. And then he makes a T-Rex with red eyes that promptly eats all the people at the bus stop. The shadow puppet. Right. Okay. Um, the good cop and the hero watch the clown do all the shadow puppets and eat the people. Instead of trying to stop him. But then after he eats the people, they try to run him over. But he does a Superman leap like... 40 feet in the air and disappears. It's So, now after a while, the Terenzi brothers finally show back up. Now, again, it's just to join the group so they can go and do all kinds of stuff. Now, remember that comment I said earlier about John Vernon saying, you're not going to make a puppet out of me? Well, flash forward to a, a clown breaking into the police station. John Vernon deciding to arrest him takes him to a, uh, a cell with two punks in it that he had put there earlier. The clown then proceeds to, uh, well, you know, kill everybody. So the goody goody cop comes in, and John Vernon cop is sitting on the clown's lap, and the clown has turned him into a puppet. <laughs> Because we can't let a good foreshadow go to waste. Um, we realize now, as the good cop decides to like try to shooting the, the clown, that if we shoot the clown's nose off, the clown will die. So we have our first clown death. Uh, there's now, now we cut to a clown parade, where the clowns are going around and sucking up all the... All the people that they've turned into cotton candy. We still don't really know why they're doing the cotton candy people, but they are. Um, okay, we, we're kind of out of order here a little bit, but... I mean, with this masterpiece, does it, it doesn't really matter. Now, when I said the tent moved, they moved it to the amusement park downtown. And nobody noticed a giant, like, 30, 45 foot tent showing up at an amusement park. In the middle of the night. That's also super well lit. Yeah. Alright. Nobody notices a lot of things in this town apparently. Um, so the clowns pull back up at their at their, uh, at their their tent. And the security guards all like. Hey. Get out of here. So you have the classic bit of a bunch of clowns getting out of a tiny car. Uh, then attacking the security guard with pies. So you've got the three stooges, like, pies, one guy getting hit by, like, 30 pies. Unfortunately for the security guard, the pies must be made of acid because it immediately melts him into a pile of bones. Uh, our hero... Our heroes are now all together again. They've teamed up with the Terenzi brothers. They have all magically discovered that the, the clowns must have moved the tent down to the amusement park and they look over there and they're like oh there it is right there how did we not notice that so they're they're going in into the into the tent again you know to discover everything um as as they are going along the Terenzi brothers manage to randomly fall into a pit of a ball pit with girl clowns all of a sudden that we hadn't seen um now we don't know what happens but when the Terenzi brothers show up again, they're covered in red lipstick. So I assume they got it on with the alien girl clowns. Because, you know, whatever. Um, about an hour and 11 minutes in, we see a clown walk in, stick a big old crazy straw into one of the cotton candy bags, and proceed to drink the person. So now we know they're taking over the town, putting everybody in cotton candy so they can turn them into food. It does need to be said that at some point the, uh, the clowns managed to kidnap the girl and put her in a balloon. Um, so the good cop and the hero um, 
rescue the girl. They find her balloon and they pop it. So they, they've rescued the girl. There Now there's the chase scene throughout the alien spaceship slash circus tent. Uh, the Terenzi brothers pop back in all of a sudden with their ice cream truck and kind of save the day. But now all of a sudden there's a giant clown that shows up. There's a big fight scene. Uh, the good cop manages to kill the giant clown, which then explodes the whole uh, spaceship. Now the um, now the hero and the girl had gotten thrown out during the fight scene, so they're on the ground. And when everything explodes, they think the Terenzi brothers and and the and Goody Goody are are dead. But then all of a sudden. The clown car from earlier that the, the, you know, the, the however many clowns got out of comes flying out of nowhere and all three of these guys get out of the clown car and they're like, we were saved. And then there's a whole like, yeah, we won. Psh, high five into the movie. <laughs> this movie screams 80s. I said it earlier, but I'll repeat it. It is the costumes, the music, the acting, the hair. The scripting. Like, this is... You couldn't get more 80s if you tried. It is a classic example of the 80s. Now, what I am surprised by is... There's a a little scene that I skipped over... Where the Terenzi brothers, the good cop, and the hero... Are walking through where there's a bunch of dinosaurs... Randomly, for no apparent reason, that they ever discuss. But they're like, oh man, what is... Maybe, you know, the aliens came to the planet hundreds of years ago, and that's where we actually got the ideas from clowns for, and they just, they come back every so often to stock up on their food and then go away and then come back. Really leads me to wondering why the Kyoto's kind of left the door for, like, the prequels and a lot of sequels just hanging out there. Why nobody's taken up the mantle to make a sequel. I know a couple years ago they they tried to get a sequel off the off the ground and for whatever reason it didn't do it. I think I heard that Sci Fi Channel tried to do like a Killer Clowns uh like a, a mini series and for whatever reason it didn't go. But man, it is uh it's a shame. As, as I think there's a universe that they they kinda created and could get really interesting if you did some prequels where you would go back in time and have, you know, various different incantations of the clowns like showing up and, and either being fought off or coming back or it, it could be ripe for some real real entertaining. Is this a good movie? No. No, it's not. It's it's terrible. But it's fun. And that is a hallmark of a movie that's worth watching. There are a lot of great movies that aren't worth watching. I will point at The Godfather. That's People love that movie. They call it one of the greatest movies of all time. I watched it once. I'm glad I did. But I'm never going to watch it again. I don't, I don't like that movie. Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Probably won't watch it like you know every month. But maybe every year or two I'll pull it back out. Give it a watch. It's fun. It's cheesy good. On my scale of uh, from four of of uh, five, uh, one to five, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. It's a lot of fun. I give it the pop culture stamp of approval. <laughs>